I am just outside Copenhagen, Denmark, where I live. And as you can see right behind me here, we have a beautiful sunset. But if you take a quick look at my watch, you will see that it's currently 20 minutes to 10. So 9.40 p.m. And I actually still have about 20 minutes of daylight left before the sun sets. And this is going to pose a number of unique challenges for me as an astrophotographer when I live this far north. If you take my book, The Cosmic Field Guide, and you flip it up to page 25, you will see that here I have put in the four levels of darkness that we work with in astrophotography. Civil darkness right after sunset, then we have nautical darkness, astronomical darkness, and night. And it's during the astronomical darkness where we can usually begin to take our astro images. And because I'm about 55 degrees north, which is further north than most people in Canada, I have a bit of an issue. In the book I have what's called darkness plots. I have it here for 50 degrees and for 60 degrees north. And what these plot shows is how many minutes, I have minutes out here, after sunset do we get civil twilight in the light, then we have nautical in the slightly darker, astro darkness, and then the black one is full on night. And as you can see here, we look at these two, I'm right in between these two. So here in the summer, we have no night, astronomical night, I should say, and we have no astronomical darkness either for a long period of time. And that finally leads me to the point of this video. What is an astrophotographer to do if you have long periods of time where you can't image, either due to bad weather or in my case, because it's just too light and we don't get enough darkness. One of my favorite things to do when the weather is just not playing ball is to go back and reprocess some old data. I find this incredibly rewarding to go back to some data I maybe shot a year or two years ago and, and just try to reprocess it again because often you don't necessarily notice your own improvements because it's small gradual improvements every time. But if you then go back to some old data and reprocess it, you can really see how much you improved over time. So I find that incredibly rewarding and, and something that I love to do here when, when the weather is just not really there for imaging. Another thing that I often do when I have poor weather, and this is more if you have like long periods where you know the weather's gonna be bad, that is equipment maintenance. I recently did a whole teardown of my Newtonian, took it apart, flocked it, cleaned it, reassembled, upgraded the focuser even. There was a whole video series on that as well, where I just took it down. But that means my equipment was like out of operation for, well, a few weeks while that upgrade was going on. But that doesn't matter to me because I know I can't image with it anyway because in my case I know during the summer it's just too light. But in your case it might just be that you have a long rainy period where there's just a lot of rain, lots of clouds, you can't image. So it doesn't matter if you take your equipment out of um, out of operation to do a bit of upgrade. If you have a cold astro camera, another thing you can do is to shoot a dark library. Essentially this just means that you could just cool down the camera to whatever temperature that you're using um, when you're normally imaging during the night and just shoot dark frames for the different exposures because they can take quite a long time. Um, if you want to shoot, let's say, um, 30 seconds, 60 seconds, 180, 300 seconds, and maybe even um, 600 second dark libraries, you need to take maybe 20 or 50 frames each. It's actually going to take quite a bit of time. And that's something you can easily do even in poor weather. Um, Obviously, it requires that you can get the camera down to the operating temperature that you would normally use when you take images in order to do this. But it's a good use of your time because you can leave the lens cap on anyway, or telescope cap on anyway. So it doesn't matter that you can't really see the stars and you don't need to do any kind of alignment. You can do this easily during the summer. So this is something that um, I actually haven't done yet, but it's on my to-do list that I need to go and shoot a dark library for my main camera. So that I just have it available at all the different um, exposure links that I might shoot during the next season. Now, in my specific case, where the issue I have here during the summer is light, there's too light out, but it doesn't mean I can't image. I just can't shoot deep sky objects, um, but what I can do is I can still shoot stuff like the moon, I can still shoot the planets, because they're bright enough that they can overpower that extra light that is here during the summer. But what do you guys do? What do you spend your time on when you can't image? Let me know in the comment section below. Oh, that's actually a drone shot. That's perfect. Oh, that's awesome, actually. Oh, there we can see it. Very, very beautiful, I think. Uh, 